the Blue Jackets took an overtime loss to the Anaheim Ducks 3-2 at home. Game starting a couple hours late because of a power outage that affected Nationwide Arena. They didn't get power back in the arena until about 5 or 5.30 and the game was supposed to start at 6.30. By the time they got power back on, they had already announced that they had delayed the game until 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, but the Jackets, they decided to make up for the lack of electric power by getting seven power play opportunities. Uh, Jackets drawing a lot of those penalties with their skating. They, they did draw a lot of some some hookings and some trippings. There was a there were you know there there was that delay of game call at the end where the refs just kind of have to call that one. But the Jackets definitely putting a lot of drawing a lot of effort penalties on their part. Uh, Dmitry Voronkov was called up with Patrick Laine being placed on IR. He didn't play, but neither did Leo Carlson for Anaheim. I guess uh, Pat Verbeek wants to kind of put him. They they want to monitor his his minutes. They kind of want to put him on some a load management kind of thing, and they say they want to use him uh, more consistently in the second half of the season so I guess Leo, Leo Carlson getting an off day uh, it was Elvis in net again I feel like it was a mostly solid outing for Elvis yet again and another pretty solid start for Columbus I feel like they've yet to really come out very flat this season and I'm sure they will at some point there's 82 games one of them they're, they're bound to start a bit slow but good on the players and good on Pascal Vincent and the rest of the coaching staff for the Blue Jackets of getting them you know getting them to play at their at a high level to start these games off. Uh, the power play train for the Jackets started early with Columbus getting three in the first period and they would score on one. I believe it was the third of the period. It was a Bemstrom one-timer from Provorov and Fantilli. And for Bemstrom, you know, that's the shot that we've been promised for years. And we've seen it in flashes here and there, obviously the, with the hat trick that he had against Nashville uh, forever ago. And then that, that goal he scored, I believe against Pittsburgh to kind of famously put uh, the Jackets lower in the draft order as far as lottery odds go. Uh, but more of that shot will go a long way for Emil Bemstrom staying with the Blue Jackets organization for the time being. And the Jackets go into the first intermission up one nothing. Then the second period starts a little bit of a slow start for both teams, but Anaheim definitely getting a little bit more going for them in the second period. The Ducks would get a power play of their own. That was killed off, but then with Jake Bean stepping up in the offensive zone, he loses the puck, gets bodied a little bit, uh, springs off a two-on-one for the Ducks. Elvis stops the first shot, but Strom would bury the rebound chance, tied up at one, and things settle down for the rest of the period. The game is tied at one after two periods, including another power play chance for the Anaheim Ducks on a penalty that Elvis Merzlikens got. A little bit of a, of a bizarre sequence, but the Jackets penalty kill doing a good job there. And the third period starts, and it's anybody's game. Jackets getting two back-to-back -back power plays, getting good looks, but just can't bury any of their chances. I feel like the Jackets, despite going one for seven on the power play, that's a pretty bad percentage. The power play itself was actually looking fairly decent. I thought both units had, you know, they, they were very active, getting good zone time, some good shots. But whether it was Destal having a good game or just not being able to bury those uh, second chance opportunities, just not exactly, they, they just didn't get many power play goals to go in. Uh, then Adam Fantilli getting his second goal of the year off of what looked like it was going to be a pretty boring chance. He was kind of in on a bit of a one-on-three all by himself. Just took a nice little shot in transition that got right past the stall. And it, was, it was his first goal in Nationwide Arena, and it gave Adam Fantilli a multi-point game in this one. Then it was the Jackets' turn to take two penalties. They killed the first one, and they did technically kill off the second one too, but as soon as Severson got out of the box, he would whiff on a clearing attempt, and it would be Leeson getting a weird shot by Elvis. Just a really bad turnover. It's just a clearing attempt that was straight up just missed by Severson. Not a great goal to give up either if you're Elvis Merzlikens. But however, given the, uh, the the game that he had overall and the fact that it came off of just a, a bit of a really rough turnover by Damon Severson, I think I, I'm willing to give Elvis a little bit of a pass on that one. Just a weird, ugly sequence all around late in the third trying to hold on to a one goal lead. Just not able to do it. But they do go into overtime having a chance to get that bad taste out of their mouth. The overtime starting with Zach Wierenski hitting the post. He's done that a few times now this season. Twice in this game, it feels like it just just a few opportunities that Wierenski has given himself that just go off the post and now just a bit, a bit rough. Elvis would stop a breakaway. Jackets getting some more possession in the offensive zone. Uh, but then neither Provorov nor Stillinger are able to catch Frank Vetrano who got... On a, on a breakaway opportunity of his own. He buries his chance past Elvis, ending the game 3-2. to two. Definitely a very disappointing result, despite me. I, I did like what I saw from the Jackets for most of this game, but man, just a, a few bad mistakes that the Ducks really were able to capitalize on. That turnover by Damon Severson. I, again, I, I've said it a few times, but I, 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 don't, I don't think it can be overstated just how brutal that ended up being. 
giving up a couple of breakaways and overtime. You can't give up too many of those. One of them are going to go in eventually. And I did mention this earlier, going one for seven on the power play isn't ideal, even though I did think that the power play was consistently active, getting some good looks. One for seven just isn't really going to cut it moving forward. That's not a that's not a good percentage to be, to be uh, converting on your power play there. It did suck that Fantilli's goal wasn't a game winner, and it wasn't even one that was scored in a win. But they got, they got a consolation point for getting the game to overtime. It is a three-game point streak. Hopefully that th this game, what they can do is they can use this to give uh, themselves a little bit of an extra bit of angst to play against uh, with uh, to play against Montreal with on Thursday. Hopefully that leaves a little bit of, of a sour taste in their mouths. Use that for motivation to uh, improve on their play in the next game. Kind of kind of clean up those uh, bad mistakes that do lead to pucks ending up in the back of your net. So hopefully that they can clean some of that stuff up against the Canadiens and the Jackets can move forward on that. So that's going to do it for this video. Thank you, thank you so much for watching. If you did make it this far into it, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed. And you'd like to see more like it, let me know what you think about the Blue Jackets in, the, in this game and in the future down in the comments below. I'll see you at the next one.